Fapota was introduced in Volume 6, Chapter 41, on 20th of May 2017, but all the information regarding why she looks the way she does hasn't been revealed until almost two years later in Chapter 51, on 30th of March 2019. This video will explain everything that made Faputa how she is, how the plot, character motivations and themes all come together in this design. First, we have to go through the relevant chapters and what they tell us about her. Chapter 41 only first shows Faputa, but we learn nothing about her yet. Chapter 42, July 2017. We get a first proper look at Faputa, so let's describe what we can see. Small in frame, dark skin, white hair and fur, has three jewel-like shapes on her head. Her talons also have the same motif. Each of her hands has three of them and they have the same shape. And color, as we later learned from the colored illustrations. As for her character, she really likes Reg. When she sees his severed arm, she gets angry and says, even though you belong to Faputa, who did this? So she's possessive. Also, she's very... wanton, as evidenced by her trying to get into Rex's pants. That is important, I wouldn't have mentioned it if it wasn't. Anywho, that's the core of Fapta that I focus on in this video. I'm not going to say much about her wanting to destroy the village, as that's the obvious part of the story that needs no explanation. Chapters 33 to 46 have little to do with Fapta directly, they mostly explore the village, introduce Vuero Erko, and set up the flashback that will soon take place. Chapter 47, July 2018. Faputa says Rek can take any part of her body he wants. She also makes a suggestive pose. It is sexual, and it's meant to be sexual. But few pages later, we see that she meant everything literally, as she ripped off her arm and ear. Poor Rek can take a break. Chapter 48, August 2018 begins the Ganja flashback. This flashback explains how the village came to be, who is Vuero Erko and where Faputa came from. In this chapter we see the abyss before the formation of Orf, so at least from 1000 years ago. In this old abyss, our Ganja corps meet some local people and one small girl from them joins the Ganja. Well, not so much joins, as she was banished for being infertile. That girl also looks quite similar to Faputa, same height and proportions, same dark skin color, same bright white hair. Chapter 49, November 2018. We learn that the girl's name is Yurumyui. Yurumyui also repeats that she can't bear children. Later they meet a rabbit-like white furry creature and Yurumyui really likes him. Again, it might seem like some detail, but it's important for understanding Faputa. Later, in the same chapter, we learn from Irumyui that her mom was apparently very important, she mated with many men and she had a lot of children. She only had one daughter though, and that's Irumyui. But when she was found out to be infertile, she was called cursed and banished at the first opportunity, which came with the Ganja corpse arriving. Then Irumyui says she doesn't want to be thrown away ever again while crying and hugging Vueko. Chapter 50, December 2018 Due to drinking water with parasites, Ganja Corpse gets sick. Irumyui too. Wazuka shows an egg-like thing he found. A relic from the abyss called Cradle of Desire or Cradle of Greed, both translations work. Robots from the Golden City say that this is essentially a wish-granting egg, but adult minds are not fit to use it because they are too complex. So they give it to Irumyui. And... Uh, classic uh, Made in Abyss stuff happens to her. You know what? The cost to our sanity is quite great when reading this manga, but it's also so good, it almost makes it worth it. Uh, but yeah, holy shit. Back to the topic. Later in that chapter, we see Rumiui giving birth to furry critters very similar to the one they befriended earlier. So we see what was her deepest desire, to bear children. But her wish wasn't quite granted, or perhaps her idea of having kids was too simplistic after all. The creatures she birthed all died quickly. Chapter 51, March 2019. Here we learn that Wazukian was feeding everyone food made from Irumyui's children, and that food cured them from the water parasites. Irumyui continues to change and grow, because our sanity wasn't quite healthy enough 
the author has to drag it down to his level. Anyway, later Wazukian gave Irumi a second cradle of greed. Irumi grows larger still and starts to move. When Bella finally has enough, the guilt of eating her children breaks him completely, he tells Irumi to take everything from him as punishment. And that's what Irumi does, uh, kinda. She does take away all his human flesh. Moments later we learn that Wazukian also used one of those wish-fulfilling eggs on himself. When he went into Irumiui, she took all of his flesh just like everyone else's, and that included the third egg, third cradle of desire. Finally, Irumiui, the village, gives birth to Faputa, who's described as her final child. As we return to the present, Vueco says Faputa inherited the three eggs. Okay, that's enough I think, now for the explanation proper. Every single of Faputa's characteristics is directly caused by her mother. Her dark skin and white hair are just like Irumiui because she's Irumiui's child, and Irumiui understands that children look like their parents. But Faputa also has fur and animal characteristics, and that's because of Irumiui's love for those white furry creatures in the abyss, and later her children. Faputa is possessive of Rag because Irumiui wanted to never be alone, so she was also scared of losing anyone. Finally, Faputa is so wanton because Irumiui was infertile. She was banished because of that, so she must have thought, if only I could bear children, I could stay with mother and brothers in the village. And that is another one of Irumiui's deep, strong desires. Faputa's motive of free jewels come from the free cradles of greed she got from her mother. And that's kind of sneaky thing here, I think, because when Vueco says that in chapter 51, it seems like she only refers to them like some kind of batteries, or perhaps metaphorically to just mean desires or wishes. Later, in chapter 55, Faputa says she was born from three eggs, and since you can see her in the same panel, you should connect the dots. Three oval things on her head, three wish-fulfilling eggs. Finally, as you have seen, the thumbnail and first frames of this video say, Faputa is love, Faputa is life. That is not a meme, that's what she truly is. Faputa is Irumiui's love, and Faputa is her desire to have children, that's the life part. You now have permission to be impressed. That's it, the main point of this video has been achieved, thank you for watching. Or rather, I should say, you just watched an in-depth, detailed explanation that took a hell of a lot of note-taking and hypothesis crafting to make, and you're welcome for that. Unrelated, but chapter 61 also has Rico's many factors anus, and I think that's pretty cool.